Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The maritime arena has seen rapid and intense development in the past centuries. With increasing maritime activities from seaborne trade, commercial fishing, oil and gas exploration, and military activities. In order to secure the lines of trades and the sea lanes remain open, political and military leaders of seafaring nations project their power at sea. And nothing represents greater strength than the presence of an aircraft carrier, the most valuable sea-based asset that projects both tactical air power and anti-surface warfare. On today's feature, we will look into some of the largest aircraft carriers currently voyaging across the vast ocean and what these ships are capable of. Aircraft carriers are operated by 14 navies worldwide. Varying in size and capabilities, the aircraft carriers can launch their air powers in three ways. The Catapult Assisted Takeoff Barrier Arrested Recovery, or CATABAR. The Short Takeoff Barrier Arrested Recovery, or STOBAR, and the Short Takeoff and Vertical Landing. The U.S. Navy, with the highest fleet of aircraft carriers worldwide, operates 11 large nuclear-powered carriers, all with CATABAR capability. The Gerald R. Ford class, designated CVN-78 and CVN-79, can carry more than 75 aircraft and more than 4,500 crew on board. Instead of using a steam-powered catabar system, the Gerald R. Ford class is equipped with an electromagnetic aircraft launch system and advanced arresting gear. The Mammoth Vessel has a full load displacement of 100,000 tons, making it the world's biggest aircraft carrier. Construction of the two completed carriers of this class took four years each to complete. With the Gerald R. Ford launched in 2013, followed by John F. Kennedy in 2019. Its two A1B nuclear reactors offer 250% more electrical supply than its predecessor, the Nimitz-class carrier. The Nimitz-class, with a full load displacement of 97,000 tons, is the world's second largest aircraft carrier after the Gerald R. Ford class. Named after Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, a total of 10 carriers of this class have been in operation with the U.S. Navy since 1975. Anywhere between 60 aircraft operates from the 4.5-acre flight deck that is equipped with a steam-powered catabar system, while the remaining 30 are parked in the below-deck hangar. Also powered by two nuclear reactors that spin the four propeller shafts, the Nimit class can reach a top speed of more than 30 knots. Both the Gerald R. Ford and Nimitz class aircraft carriers have been constructed by Newport News Shipbuilding Company in Virginia. The construction of the supercarriers has been refined since its first build in the 1950s. The supercarriers are constructed in separate modular pieces called superlifts that contain compartments and components of the ship. 
About 200 of these super lifts are built separately. each weighing between 80 to 900 tons. The super lifts are then placed and welded into their designated position in the ship. With the 575 ton island set last onto the flight deck. The Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carrier of the United Kingdom is the third largest aircraft carrier. With a displacement of 65,000 tons, constructed by Thales Group, Babcock International, and BAE Systems Maritime, the first vessel of this class began construction in 2009 and only started her sea trial in 2017. HMS Queen Elizabeth is the largest warship built for the Royal Navy, perhaps the newest aircraft carrier voyaging across the maritime. Over 3 million meters of cable installed, 80,000 pipes tested, and 300 systems commissions. The state-of-the-art carrier has the latest technology and automated systems fitted, which streamlined the manpower requirement of about 679 crew to accommodate the operation of 40 rotary and fixed-wings aircraft. Designed for short takeoff and vertical landing, the aircraft carrier mainly hosts the operation of their Merlin helicopters and the F-35B aircraft, utilizing the jet blast deflector and the 13 degrees bow deck ski jump ramp for takeoff. The carrier is also designed to accommodate the Caddo Bar system, should the Royal Navy decide to convert it to conventional takeoff and landing operation. A carrier truly represents the pillar of power and tremendous operational capabilities of the operating nation. The scale and technology invested in the newest aircraft carriers are far more superior and advanced than the first carriers. It is an outstanding asset that allows nations to display their prowess and relevance in the volatile maritime world of the 21st century. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.